Baseball in the 40s was a lot more of a contact sport. It had a lot more physicality to it. Those were rough guys, and they played it really tough. The love of the game grew for me for this project, just knowing more about um, this story. I don't know if it could be more physical than that. Any project that you approach, there's always an element of research, and there was a huge amount of work to be done. The movie happens from 1945 to 1947. The outside world of Brooklyn and New York, all that had to look really convincing. And then we wanted to have real baseball players. We wanted everyone to look natural. They changed in the locker room. They got lockers in the locker room, and they played like a team. But the place where the world had to expand and grow was within the stadiums. The trick of that was that there were not no stadiums we could shoot in. A large part of the movie takes place in historic ballparks. The production looked across the entire country. We looked in other countries for places that had the type of structure, that type of iconic structure that uh, Ebbets Field. I remember playing in all those ballparks in Birmingham, Chattanooga. I haven't seen, but I do know that some of the ballparks are still there. The field we shot on Rickwood is the field where I play a lot of my high school baseball. In fact, I played my last high school baseball game on Rickwood Field. I've always loved that field, and it, I mean, it has such, such a rich history, like with the Negro Leagues. It was an incredible experience. And here we are today in Engel Stadium, which is the defunct minor league field, which has the architecture that we can add a visual effect to create a second story and create our Ebbets. We turned it into an enormous green screen set. And we green screened the whole outfield, and that was Richard Hoover's idea. A contractor came in and laid in 180 telephone poles, two rows of telephone poles. 1,200 feet long, 40 feet high, by all accounts on any movie, it's an enormous green screen. And it was just big. It's the biggest one I've ever done. It was like it went back in time, that, that first day we put on the uniform. And that was, that was a unique feeling. There's a particular way that you put on these old uniforms. There was no mirror there, which is really good because I didn't get to have a moment with it, you know, by myself. So when I saw pictures of me wearing the uniform, I didn't know it was me. I thought it was him. Ever since I was a little kid, I grew up playing baseball, and I've moved around all throughout in the infield, and played center field some, but there was a lot of rust there that needed to be knocked off. I haven't played baseball in 23 years, so it was uh, real rusty, but uh, it ended up being okay. I ended up at least looking like I could possibly have played at one point or another. I had this baseball tryout, and I thought I bombed. Hitting was good, my footwork was, they were like, oh, he has good feet, he has good hands, because I was athletic, but the throwing, it was embarrassing. <laughs> it was embarrassing. The first couple auditions were regular acting auditions, and then you have to go to a baseball tryout. We did two weeks of baseball tryouts in uh, in LA before we even found out if we got the role. We had auditions for the director and producers, but we actually had a, an actor's tryout. We had baseball practice starting in LA probably about a month before we started in Atlanta. So it was about a month in LA and then two weeks in Atlanta. As soon as I got here, I found out fundamentally a lot of the things I, I was doing. Hey, don't you know nothing? Was not correct. You're supposed to get back when I step off. So I had to be sort of retaught. Luckily, there's a, a guy named Pete Smith who was a pitcher for the Braves for 10 years who was here helping me every day. And that guy was amazing. There are some standards that you're gonna have. You know, your elbow's gonna be up, your balance. They had a little quicker balance back then. We trained our team for two weeks, and then we had our actors come in for the final two weeks. And once they came in, they were instantly greeted. Um, our ball players started to work with them. It wasn't just the coaches, our ball players were working with them, trying to get their hands right and get their feet right. I wanted to make it look like this is a major league team. It was this army of studs, just like 60 awesome ball players. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was so intimidating. So we were out in LA thinking, you know, hey, we're getting pretty good. We're getting pretty solid. And we got down to Atlanta and saw, and we were with the real ball players now. And then I was like, 
no, I'm just an actor. Take a lead, and then when the ball's hit, he goes like this, then he goes down. Help me out, Peter. Come on, Peter. Come on. Time kill drops. Can't do everything. God almighty. <laughs> I had worked with Alan Graff okay, on Knight's Tale. He did all the jousting in Knight's Tale, which was all about impact. So I thought, well, if Alan can do jousting, he can do baseball. We wanted to have real baseball players, so he scouted a baseball team. I invited a, probably about almost 200 guys out for the combine and the practices, and then we narrowed it down to about 30 guys, 35 guys. Those guys, you know, I was always, every day I was in awe of how good all those guys are. I can only imagine being an actor and then coming out here and being overwhelmed by baseball players. I mean, for, for our standpoint, trying to be an actor is a lot, I mean, it's difficult. And for them to come out here and play baseball and hang with everyone, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And that urgency and energy and I won't say violence, but that kinetic um, vibrancy of the game, we're gonna capture that. There were collisions at home plate. We're gonna see those, we're gonna feel them. Jackie Robinson was a physical guy. Here's a football player, basically, playing baseball. He'd steamroll guy, roll over guys. And when he slid in, he was taking guys out. You know, usually you see a baseball movie, it's shot from the same perspective that you see a baseball game from. This movie is actually shot inside the game. I move the camera a lot, where a lot of people don't. I think he really wanted the baseball to be as exciting as possible, to be as creative as possible. We're trying to put the camera where they haven't put the camera before. It's in your face, real physical, because you have to. Hey, let's do this right quick. We're just slow. I don't think it could be any more physical unless we were, like, fighting. Even if it was, like, fighting, just you're, you're fighting the ground. You're sliding on the ground. And, the ground's gonna win <laughs> most of the time. Jumping six feet in the air, sliding, diving in the dirt. He had to learn how to play baseball in about 12 weeks. Diving back to first. He was more keen than anybody to get all that right. Diving for balls, a lot of diving. He wanted to look like Jackie Robinson out there. There was one moment I, I remember we were doing this pickle play. We had done this pickle play, like, I think the 12th, we were at the 12th time. And all these emotions started running through me. Like, I just couldn't believe how tired I was. You just, you get to that point where your body's just like, there's nothing else. There's nothing else here. What got me through it was thinking about how hard it was it was for him. I got one, maybe two more in me because he would have one, two more in him. Johnny Sane looking in. Oh, and it's a hard hit ball down the third base line. Remarkable the amount of work that he's put into uh, developing his skills in baseball. I mean, he really invested in a way that I've rarely seen any actor ever, ever do. Chad is James Dean. I mean, so kind of just instinctual method, sensitive, everything perfect. And then uh, he can do all the athletic stuff as well, which is amazing. I don't think James Dean could have done that. Go ahead, Ryan. Jackie, all three now. One, two, three. Jackie! Shooting in fields where these people actually played, it's just a dream come true. I mean, you put on the uniform. I actually take infield and and uh, receive, you know, a hard hit balls at shortstop was uh, was great. All the players have, have kind of, you know, come together. I mean, I got, I've made some friends that I'll, I'll hang out with for a very long time after this. When they cast me, I heard they were doing, you know, three weeks of baseball training out in Atlanta. And I called Craig the second, and I said, look, I want to come. And he said, yeah, but they don't want to pay you. <laughs> I said, I just want to come and be with the ball players because I wanted to get back into the culture of this. And they actually started calling me coach because we go out. And I go, no, 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 we're going home now. We have practice tomorrow. And they're like, ah, oh, Brad. It was kind of like going through, you know, war. It was great. That two weeks of training camp really did kind of bring us together. Strangely enough, as we started, we started to really feel and function like a team. I mean, I can't put it into to words. I could never have read the script and been like, oh, that's what they're going to do. You know, it's, it's hard, but it's, you know, it's still fun. Some days you look back on it and it'll be a little bit more romantic and nostalgic. But at the end of the day, we're playing baseball. 